Good morning, everyone. Today we'll start this new chapter on solar photovoltaic. It uh, continues from our last uh, discussion on solar thermal energy or essentially different ways in which we can use solar energy to provide electricity or to, uh, to provide heating. Now, solar PV focuses essentially on uh, using the solar energy to produce electricity. And the thing that separates solar PV from the solar thermal systems uh, is the simple fact that uh, photovoltaic cells uh, or PV cells allow us to directly convert the solar radiation into electricity, right? It's a one-step conversion. You do not have to convert from solar energy to thermal and thermal to electrical, like what we covered in the previous chapter. And so you have a very simple device uh, with no moving parts, and uh, it captures the entire radiation from the sun. So it can make use of both the direct beam radiation as well as the diffuse radiation uh, to produce the electrical power output. Uh, PV cells have been, or uh, photovoltaic parks have been coming up uh, in various places around the globe. In Saudi Arabia, a 300 megawatt uh, uh, photovoltaic power park came up at Sakaka, and uh, it has already been connected to the electricity grid uh, of Saudi Arabia. And uh, based on this power rating, it uh, is uh, it can power 45,000 homes uh, in Al Jawf region. Now, this one does not have any storage, right? And um, one of the challenges with uh, adding more and more photovoltaic capacity to the grid is with respect to the storage, but it helps us uh, meet some of the energy needs at times uh, uh, when it is available. So it's it's a very advantageous technology. It's very useful, but uh, as with any technology, we have to understand the challenges and the appropriate applications for it. Now, uh, when we look at solar put photovoltaic systems as a whole, they are a very, very important part of the grid of the future uh, or the, uh, the sustainable uh, power system of the future. Now, if you look at the current electricity network or if you want to call it the past electricity network, it is uh, mainly centralized and it is monodirectional in the sense that uh, you have centralized power plants which are uh, generating electricity, 300 megawatt, 400 megawatt or whatever. And these power plants uh, in Saudi Arabia, they're mainly thermal power plants uh, burning natural gas or uh, crude oil these power plants then generate electricity and then transmit through transmission lines to substations eventually to homes factories and other places so the uh, the production of electricity is very centralized in the sense that it happens at a fixed location at the central location where it's all concentrated and it is monodirectional means it's uh, the tra uh, the transmission happens only in one direction from the plant to the homes or from the plant to the factory, okay? However, when we look at the future electricity network, uh, it's going to be decentralized and bidirectional. So when we talk about decentralized, the idea is that yes, you will still have these power plants which are generating huge amounts of power, but at the same time, you will also have um, small capacities, solar and wind farms, and also some sort of uh, some amount of electricity being generated from the rooftop solar PVs. So you have electricity being generated not just in a power plant, but also in other locations. Uh, and secondly, uh, when we talk about the bidirectional aspect of it, uh, the electricity generation and, uh, and uh, uh, you know transfer of electricity to the grid will not only happen from the power plant to the homes, but it will also happen uh, from the homes and the solar wind farms and factories onto the grid, right? So even homes, instead of just consuming electricity, they will also produce electricity and uh, provide it to the grid. Now, again, uh, most of the homes will not provide, uh, will not produce enough energy or electricity uh, to power themselves completely, right? So the amount of electricity produced is going to be probably 10%, 20% of their energy needs. But the idea is that they still will be producing a reasonable amount of electricity, which will be going onto the grid. So you, you, uh, what we will have is bidirectional uh, um, electricity meters, where you have uh, you're consuming electricity, but also you're supplying electricity to the grid. Now, when you look at the photovoltaic power potential, the long-term average, of course, uh, over the globe, this is how the picture looks like. The more darker regions are the ones uh, which uh, are, have higher values of. Um, uh, photovoltaic power output, meaning you can generate more electricity at those locations. And uh, certainly you would want to install uh, a, a photovoltaic park at a location which uh, has a very high potential. So you can see this is Saudi Arabia. 
uh, and uh, of course it's it's very high. I uh, will look. We'll have a more detailed look in Saudi Arabia to see the distribution within the country. But uh, when you compare globally, um, Saudi Arabia, uh, North Africa, South Africa, Australia, some parts of China, um, some part of uh, South America, and uh, the western side of uh, US, mainly California and those western states, these have a lot of uh, photovoltaic power potential. Okay, uh, so it's reasonably well distributed uh, across the globe. Within Saudi Arabia itself, uh, uh, overall it's high on the uh, compared to the global levels. Uh, it's more, it's 5.2 kilowatt hour uh, on a daily average or higher than this, and the yearly totals are going to be 1900 or higher. So it's already very good. But within the country also we have some um, distribution with uh, uh, places in the northwest or even the uh, southwest uh, having very high um, photovoltaic potential. Right, so Tabuk uh, and the region in on Nyom has very high power uh, photovoltaic power potential, which is why we're building a, a city powered entirely by renewable energy there because it has the right um, conditions for doing such an establishment. Same way when you look at Sakaka, which is where the 300 megawatt uh, plant came up, uh, very close to Sakaka, and you can see it's, it's it lies in that high uh, photovoltaic power potential region. Right, so. Um, Overall, Saudi Arabia is a very good place for uh, generating uh, electricity using photovoltaic panels, uh, and uh, but there's still some places which are better than others, right? And uh, when you look at this yearly totals or daily totals, you can simply compare this with the energy um, consumption that you calculated for your homes, and you can see that it's not going to meet the entire energy uh, load that you have, right? It's probably going to meet uh, some uh, some percentage of it, maybe some part of it. But uh, a significant part, not one person, not two person, but maybe ten percent or maybe twenty percent. Okay, and uh, by the way, these are kilowatt uh, peak values, so these are sort of the uh, the highest possible values. In reality, uh, it might be lower than what you see here, but still, uh, it, it's it's a reasonable number that we're looking at. Now, in terms of the solar photovoltaic deployment, well, uh, the amount of solar photovoltaic uh, uh, panels being uh, installed around the globe has been growing very, very rapidly. Now, this picture here shows us the cumulative um, solar installment in terms of gigawatt power, uh, both photovoltaic and CSP, but mainly it's photovoltaic. Uh, in fact, 99% uh, of the capacity that's, uh, uh, that's coming online in terms of solar is photovoltaic, 1% is solar thermal uh, because of the economics. Uh, because PV is much cheaper, about half the price for CSP. But uh, when you look at the timeline, right, right, all the way from 2002 uh, prediction for the future. Now, uh, what has happened is every, you know, every year we like to make predictions of how things will work out in the future. So in 2006, they make the prediction for photovoltaic power deployment all the way to 2030. And this is the line that's showing that, right? You can see uh, we expected a little bit less. Now, as the prices started falling down, we uh, increased our estimated deployment of photovoltaic. And you can see this is for 2009, uh, eight prediction for 2030, nine prediction for 2030, so on and so forth. Right? It keeps going up. How much we will have in 2030? Uh, our estimates keep going up. And these are all these colored lines are all projections of the future. Now, these black dots, on the other hand, black circles are the uh, observed. Um, uh, deployments are the actual deployments. And as you can see, the actual deployments are happening much, much faster than any of the projections. And these projections, by the way, are very optimistic, right? There are other projections which are pessimistic. So even uh, the deployment is happening at such a fast level that is beating even the most optimistic uh, projections. So for an instance, uh, you could, uh, if you look at uh, the prediction for 2014, in 2014, we predicted that uh, by 2030, meaning in 16 years, we would have um, about 400, 500 uh, gigawatt peak of solar capacity installed. But we sort of more or less achieved that within the next two to three years uh, in, in um, 2016, 2017 around. So uh, essentially, this uh, uh, the uh, the deployment is happening much faster than expected, much faster than. Um, uh, projected and it's it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a very good thing that we are deploying much faster, which means that we are are uh, decarbonizing faster uh, and we are um, uh, you know making use of solar uh, energy to generate electricity and move more and more closer to the future electricity grid.
right? So uh, since the deployment is happening so rapidly, right, and it will continue to happen more rapidly, we uh, have to see this sort of a curve even, even in Saudi Arabia with uh, respect to meeting the 2030 vision targets. And um, so since this is something which is happening very, very rapidly, it makes sense to understand uh, how photovoltaic panel works, uh, what it is, and uh, how can we do some basic calculations and what are the challenges with uh, its use uh, within the country and uh, beyond. Now, uh, one of the main reasons why this has been uh, increasing very, very rapidly is it has to do with the price, right? So uh, the solar PV modules, uh, their prices per watt have been dropping drastically. So they've dropped about 100 times since the 1980s and almost 10 times by since 2010. So in 2010, um, in terms of uh, solar energy utilization, you could say solar thermal and solar photovoltaic were more or less, you know, uh, equal, right, in terms of the cost. So there is not, uh, there is, uh, there is no specific reason to choose solar PV over solar thermal. But uh, in the last ten years, uh, things have changed. Uh, several uh, factors are, are there. We'll, we'll talk about them, and uh, the cost of solar PV has drop down drastically, 10 times drop, which is absolutely huge. We did not see such a huge drop for solar thermal as of now, which is why uh, solar PV has become cheaper than solar thermal. So now this uh, this plot here shows the price drop uh, in terms of dollar per watt uh, uh, for solar PV modules from 1980 to 2010. And you can see this is absolutely huge drop. So uh, obviously, when you look at this price drop, you can see that in 1980s, 1990s, it made no sense to install solar PV. It was way too costly, right? Now we, are, we have reached levels where it makes sense, okay? And how has that happened? Well, it has happened because of many reasons. Now, this is a more zoomed in picture it's showing from 2010 to 2019, and it's showing the, um, uh, the cost of various components of a given solar panel, right? The module, the cell, the wafer, uh, uh, polysilicon and uh, so on and so forth. Now, again, what you can see is from 2010 onwards till 2019 or a 10-year period, the prices have dropped by a factor of 10. 10 times the drop is very huge. And this has happened because of many reasons, right? Um, there have been cost reductions in the cost of uh, polysilicon itself. Uh, the, uh, the wafer cell and module manufacturing has become cheaper. And this has essentially happened because of uh, economies of scale, meaning we have uh, built factories which are producing huge, huge quantities. So then when you produce very huge quantities, the cost of each quantity becomes small. Uh, it's a simple economies of scale. And this economies of scale was essentially uh, pushed forward by China. So China is uh, responsible for bringing down the prices uh, by uh, incentivizing or by promoting uh, the manu local manufacturing of solar photovoltaic cells. So almost all the photovoltaic cells uh, or a large majority of photovoltaic cells that you can purchase globally, they are more or less coming from China because China makes the lowest uh, priced uh, solar photovoltaic cells. And those are, not, I mean, it's, um, those cells are, 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 those panels are good, right? It's, uh, uh, they're not cheap because they're bad. They're, they're, they're cheap because they have uh, built very huge factories and uh, they have brought down the prices drastically. And uh, there has also been some efficiency gains uh, through R&D and others, but essentially it's uh, it was uh, a push in making bigger factories and uh, figuring out how to make uh, things, uh, how to make more of these panels uh, while maintaining the efficiency or increasing efficiency uh, bit by bit as much as possible. So this is uh, another map. Uh, it is showing us the levelized cost of energy or the economic potential of installing a photovoltaic power plant. Now, the levelized cost of energy is, is a single metric or a single number that tells us how much it costs to produce uh, electricity or a unit of uh, uh, energy in terms of, let's say, kilowatt hour, right, uh, using solar PV. And it's a very good tool for comparing with different um, uh, uh, energy conversion system. So if you have the LCOE for solar PV, you can compare it with solar thermal, you can compare it with uh, gas turbine power plants and see for yourself how much is this costlier, how much is it cheaper and where does it compare and what needs to be done, right? So uh, now the life cycle cost, uh, it includes all costs. So it includes things such as the capital cost, which is the money you uh, pay for purchasing all these panels, installing them. Uh, it includes the cost of the land. If you have to purchase a huge land area to install your solar photovoltaic plant, it includes the cost of labor, uh, the salaries you have to pay, the maintenance and uh, other things to keep uh, this working over its lifetime. 
and then at the end it, it involves the cost of disposable you have to dispose it off right so essentially it's like um you you uh uh, you start a plant, you employ people, and the plant works for 25 years, and you generate some energy out of it. All the energy you generate out of it versus all the costs that you pay for it, right? Everything included. And when you divide the entire cost by the amount of energy, what you get is a number in terms of um, cents per kilowatt hour, right? And uh, that's the essential levelized cost of electricity. Depending on the solar photovoltaic potential, of course, with the same number of panels, you're going to generate more or less energy, if depending on how much sun you have, right? And uh, so the cost of electricity will go higher and lower. The levelized cost of electricity will go higher and lower, simply depending on uh, the amount of solar radiation you have available within uh, that location. So this again is the world map showing the levelized cost of electricity, and anything below uh, six or seven cents per kilowatt hour is already very good it's it's comparable it's it's at a level where you can start uh, building power plants right so you can see that uh, we're looking at uh, light yellow or slightly orange right not more than that and you can when you look at all of uh, all across the globe saudi arabia is very well placed right uh, and essentially when you look at this uh, this this small region here uh, that's the region near new york uh, northwest part that's even better placed for um, it's uh, slightly even lower levelized cost of electricity so uh, it makes sense for now it is way it is becoming comparable to the cost of uh, fossil fuel generation so uh, although again this is without battery so it is very good as a start and we will keep building on it but it's at a level where it makes sense to invest in solar panels right so that's that's the key part here now when we look at a photovoltaic cell itself well uh, one single cell like what we have here can produce one to two watts of power, right? It's not much. Uh, so what we have to do is we need to connect all of these uh, in, in, into a lot of cells into uh, a module and then a lot of modules, they get connected into uh, what are called as uh, arrays. And arrays then form, uh, they give us reasonable amount of power, right? And then you have a lot of arrays uh, put together to give you uh, uh, megawatts of power, 100, 200, 300 or whatever, right? Uh, so once you have a module, photovoltaic module, module, depending on how many modules you put together, you can come up with a smaller or large photovoltaic system, right? Which makes it really, really flexible. If you purchase one module or 10 modules, you can generate a certain amount of uh, power output. If you have a factory, you want to cover your entire roof, well, you can just scale it up. You just buy more of this. So it's a very easily scalable system. And uh, it's a very uh, uh, it's a very simple system. It does not have any moving parts. And the cost reductions that have happened over the years have uh, allowed um, uh, it to become more uh, attractive for us to purchase it, right? So, uh, however, when we are looking at the photovoltaic cells, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. First of all, uh, the collection of dust on the panel surface, uh, which happens over a period of time, it reduces the performance of solar cells. So you have to figure out what is the best technique for you to keep cleaning the solar cells, right? It depends on the location. It depends on how many solar cells uh, arrays do you have. If you have something like maybe 20 to 30, maybe you can just clean it manually, right? Or get someone to clean it manually. If you have thousands of them, 2,000, 3,000, 10,000, it may make sense to look at an automated system, right? So it's uh, you have to figure out what solution you want to use, but you have to clean the dust. Uh, this also depends on how, where are you located, right? If you're located somewhere in the eastern province, maybe you have more dust accumulation, all right? We have a sandstorm, you have to clean it all up. So again, this is this could be the cleaning part can be done once in a week, once in a month, depending on your location, but it's something that needs to be done, okay? Another part with solar PV, as we discussed before, is um, it uh, will give you the maximum power in summer, of course, when you have more solar radiation, uh, it's going to be smaller in other seasons, so you have to uh, take it. Uh, you have to look into that accordingly, because uh, your energy needs uh, will maybe may remain the same. If you're running a factory, you may want to produce the exact same amount, number of uh, uh, devices, whether summer or winter. But you, if uh, your same number of panels are going to give you less power, so it varies from sometimes day to day, but mainly it varies over seasons. And also, uh, there will be no power during night, of course, right? There's no storage associated with solar photovoltaic systems. So it is where solar thermal comes in. And there will be very, very less uh, uh, power or a huge reduction in power on cloudy days, right? How much reduction depends on how cloudy it is. But uh, 
uh, these are the challenges, right? So uh, it makes sense to have a backup um, uh, power generation if you want to rely only on solar PV, right? Or maybe use some sort of a hybrid system. So uh, it's very good. It's it's useful to meet a part of our energy needs, um, uh, but the storage part is uh, sort of the challenging part. Uh, and uh, we'll talk more about photovoltaic cells and how, uh, uh, what are the different components of it, uh, how does it work, uh, what makes it work, and we'll do some simple uh, calculations while also understanding the basic terminologies uh, associated with uh, photovoltaic cells, the currents and uh, and the voltages and uh, so on and so forth. Right. So uh, have a nice uh, weekend. We'll uh, meet again on Sunday, inshallah.